The time is coming for Ronaldo and Messi, and even if other names come to light as their possible successors, no name is shining brighter than Kylian Mbappé. But the question is, does he have what it takes to live up to his predecessors? How can Mbappé possibly match over 1500 goals between the two greats? Can Mbappé become a GOAT? Let's see. First of all, any future GOAT needs a dramatic origin story and trust me, Mbappé definitely has that. His father arrived in France as a refugee, which were already pretty stressful circumstances, but then things didn't exactly calm down in France. His parents eventually settled down in Bondy and during his childhood he was forced to live in one of the most violent neighborhoods in France. By the time he was seven, the riots got so bad that his street looked like literal hell. Flames and wreckage taking over the landscape, the unrest lasted for a bit more than three weeks, 8,000 cars were set on fire and nearly 3,000 protesters were arrested. It all started after two boys who were running from the police hid in an electrical station, not only dying from electrocution but causing a massive power outage and igniting years of dissatisfaction with police brutality and youth unemployment. After this, he needs a proper story of how his love for football led him to overcome each and every difficulty that came in his way. So just picture this, his mother had been a pro handball player and his father played at his local club A.S. Bondi. Genetics were clearly on his side. At two years of age, everyone's hearts would melt watching baby Kilian sit in his dad's locker room listening to the team talks. Completely fascinated by the energy around him, it was no wonder when his parents began noticing that football was not just a passion, it was an obsession for him growing up. He would go to bed carrying a football like it was a makeshift teddy bear, he would watch football matches like they were cartoons, sitting in front of the TV and watching four to five matches in a row. I am not going to lie to you, to an extent, his parents seemed to worry for his sanity, but then they realized it was all meant for him. When he was six years old, his dad was no longer playing and had now turned his focus towards coaching the local youth team and the day Killian joined, his jaw dropped. It had once been suggested that Killian carry the ball everywhere, believing that if you loved the ball, one day it would love you back, and it's hard to argue that indeed it seemed to love him more than all the other kids. Over the years this love grew bigger and bigger and quickly the rumors started spreading and the first team to buy into them was Chelsea. At 11 years of age Mbappé was flown out to London alongside his parents, he met Ancelotti, he met Drogba, he got a tour of the stadium, he even played a match alongside their under 12s and Chelsea were extremely impressed. However the Mbappé family was not and believing the best place for their son was in France they went back and 6 months later just as they expected another offer arrived. Claire Fontaine, the most prestigious of French academies. Let me catch my breath before I mention all of the names that arrived from there. Anelka, Rafael Guerreiro, Matuidi, Saha, Ben Arfa, Giroud, Henri, Matuidi and hopefully that's enough for you to understand its importance and why there was now no reason to refuse the offer. Over the three years he stayed there, every club in the world approached Mbappé, but one in particular appealed to him above all else. If the walls of his bedroom were completely plastered with pictures of Cristiano Ronaldo, no wonder Real Madrid was the club of his heart, and when Zinedine Zidane told him on the phone how much he wanted to see him play live, there was no way to deny his second favorite player of all time of his biggest wish. Pictures of Kylian in Madrid posing alongside Ronaldo and other greats look now like a bit of foreshadowing, but back then they only went so that their kid could meet his heroes. They were set on their plan of keeping him in France until it was just the right time to let go. At 16 years of age, he began taking the leap towards professional status, joining AS Monaco's reserve squad. Or so he thought. After all, he was only given a youth contract, but after a mere three weeks, first team coach Leonardo Jardim was so impressed that he would give him his debut, coming in with just two minutes to go and breaking Thierry Henry's record of being Monaco's youngest ever player. It had been 21 years since it was set. Two months later, in another late appearance, he took Henri's record for being the youngest goal scorer ever as well.
And two weeks after that, he was already being handed his first professional contract. Now, the third step towards becoming a GOAT, Mbappe had to get himself a blockbuster introduction to the world stage, and man oh man, he didn't play around. Before he even played his first full season with Monaco, he went on to tear apart the under-19 Euros with 5 goals in 5 matches and even winning the trophy, though he would lose the tournament's best player award to his partner Kevin Augustin. Then the season began and at first he was still not being given much time, but by February he was averaging a goal and an assist every 64 minutes. Leonardo Jardim was on his knees, he just had to give him playing time and once he did, the result was shocking. On his first start in February he got a goal and an assist, then another start and another goal. On his third he managed a hat-trick and there was just no way to deny him, he had to start against Manchester City in the Champions League last 16. Alongside the legendary Radamel Falcao and the underrated genius of Bernardo Silva, a baby-faced Mbappé proved to be a real assassin, scoring both home and away to seal the result in an incredible six-goal draw, with Monaco tumbling their mighty opponents. The next round, it was a different team but the same outcome, with three goals across both legs, the 18-year-old would be the main reason behind Dortmund's exit. The entire world was in awe of a teenager who was quickly become every fullback's worst nightmare. Unfortunately, having to beat a Juventus squad that had conceded only two goals throughout the whole tournament up to that moment proved too much for Monaco, who saw their legendary UCL run finally come to an end. But there was more to that incredible season. PSG had dominated the league for years. It seemed there was about an equal chance of Monaco winning the UCL or winning the league. But in the end, they ended up dethroning their billionaire rivals with 26 goals and 11 assists. Mbappé managed to be the team's second highest goal scorer and one of their most prolific assist makers, despite the obvious lack of minutes in comparison to his teammates. Just keep in mind, he averaged a goal contribution every 70 minutes. Now that he had introduced himself to the world in fashion, it was time to make headlines with a big money move and so, in July, Real Madrid arrived in Monaco with an offer of £161 million. Monaco had already come to terms with the idea of losing their new star when Mbappé swiftly informed everyone that it was not yet time to join Real, which became even more strange when just a month later he joined PSG for £161 million, becoming the second most expensive player of all time. Once again, Mbappé was 100% set on his goals with no rush. PSG was the perfect way to get an extremely competitive world-class squad while cashing in on a millionaire contract and still somehow managing to be even closer to his family and his roots. After all, he was still only 19. This is how you manage a career. In his first season at PSG, he adapted instantaneously and by January he was already on 26 goals and assists. If Neymar had outshined his transfer, Mbappe's performances would do the same to Neymar. However, over the rest of the season he would slow down substantially and it would be his biggest admirers, Real Madrid, who would knock him out of the Champions League early on in the last 16 rounds with three goals by his idol, Cristiano Ronaldo. Still, Mbappe didn't seem to have many second thoughts regarding his decision to delay his arrival in Madrid. Over summer, the 2018 World Cup was the perfect place for him to show off his ability and he did just that. After a relatively quiet group stage with a single goal for Mbappé as France had to squeeze past every team they faced, it was time to go head-to-head -head with Messi's Argentina, an aspiring legend versus the real deal. It was bound to be a great game but it turned out to be much more than that. It was career-defining. After going in front early with a usual frenetic run from Bappé, getting them a penalty, France were then losing 2-1 when Pavard tied the match. With half an hour to go, it was up for the taking, but Bappé didn't need those 30 minutes. Four were enough to put two goals down with two incredibly cold-blooded finishes that could have you swearing this was a 30-year-old striker from how cunning they were. Aguero's late goal wasn't enough to stop it, Mbappé had been the star on the day of Messi's downfall. Perhaps it was one of the first signs that he was indeed the chosen one.
After two games resemblant of the sort of pragmatism found in the group stage, France was on to the final, bound to face Croatia, and after an incredibly chaotic first half, Mbappé was the one to smash in France's fourth goal, becoming not just a World Cup winner at the ripe age of 19, but also the youngest player to score in a World Cup final since the king himself, Pelé, 60 years earlier. When asked if this massive achievement could lead him to take home the Ballon d'Or, Mbappé was quick to answer, I don't care about that, I just want to go to bed and sleep with a World Cup trophy. Long gone were the times when a football was his bedtime companion. By the end of the year, he finished fourth, just outside the podium. The next season saw PSG deploy what seemed like a new version of Mbappé. If before he had occasionally outshined Neymar, with injuries now constantly tormenting the Brazilian, Mbappé became the star of the team. By the end of the season, it seemed he had scored in every single game. It had been through an astonishing 54 goals and assists in just 43 matches that the 20-year-old had made PSG champions of France once again. But surprisingly, the Champions League had turned sour once again, with a substantially weaker Manchester United side managing to render Mbappé's efforts useless. Four goals and five assists in eight matches, one of each in the last round and once again no medal to collect in the end. The following year he got the same sort of feeling once again as the league was stopped in its tracks with the pandemic taking over the world, but at the very least it provided him with an opportunity. The final three rounds of the Champions League would be taking place in Lisbon in single leg ties across the span of 11 days. One run of stupendous form could be enough to secure him the long-awaited Champions League. Having been spectacular over the early stages of the tournament, there were a lot of expectations on him, but being five months without playing proved substantial and Mbappé failed to score in the final three rounds, losing the final to Bayern through a single goal scored by his fellow countryman Kingsley Coma. Perhaps if this final had gone another way, this would have been the perfect time to finally leave for Real Madrid, but instead, Mbappé felt forced to give it one final go. The outcome was his best season to date, hitting the 40-goal mark for the first time in his career, demolishing Barcelona in the last 16 round of the Champions League with four goals, including a hat-trick in the first leg, and then getting his revenge on Bayern with two goals to seal PSG's win in Munich, only for it all to come crumbling down as Mbappé injured his calf, missed the second leg of the semi-finals against Man City and watched PSG get knocked out yet again. I'll try not to bore you too much with the details because this story has been in every newspaper cover over the last year and it's getting really annoying at this point, but by the end of the season Mbappé was finally decided to move to Real only for every possible bid imaginable to be rejected by PSG's billionaire owner. Some say Florentino went as high as 200 million for a player who had a single year left in his contract and still the answer was no. Mbappé was now stuck in Paris, seemingly against his own will, the fans had now turned on him, booze became a regular thing, you would expect him to fall down and begin underperforming, but no. Right in October he joined the national team for the Nations League Final Four and he was exceptional, pulling off two incredible comebacks with a goal and an assist in under 7 minutes as France was behind 2-0 against Belgium and then the same story in the final, a goal and assists as France were behind behind 1-0 against Spain. It seems that if you have Mbappé, then you have always got a chance. That reminds me of someone else. Ever since then he has been incredible, leading the shards in both goals and assists, totaling 40 across both competitions already, on his way to his 5th French league title. In the Champions League, 6 goals and 4 assists in 8 matches, 2 of those goals in his previous round against Real Madrid, and still somehow he was knocked out. It's genuinely astonishing how PSG have failed to capitalize on the immense talent of this young man, even with Neymar Di Maria and Messi by his side, it's it's almost as if money couldn't buy success. Regardless, clearly the time is coming for Mbappé, with a rivalry brewing between him and the goal machine that is Erling Haaland, we might be in for another clash of titans and with his contract running out, it's clear to everyone that soon the Santiago Bernabeu will be shearing out for Kylian Mbappé. If the first time he faced Cristiano he was asked about whether he was still his idol, and in the most cold-blooded of manners he said, back then he was my idol, but now that is over.
it is now time to prove that he remains dead set on his goals and that he is capable of emulating the success of Cristiano. If Mbappé manages to achieve just half of what Ronaldo and Messi have, it will already be a tremendous success. But if it serves of any encouragement to Mbappé, Ronaldo has provided him with his blessing, claiming a while ago that Mbappé is not just the future of football, he is already its present. Hopefully in a few years we will look back at this video and say, you crazy bastard, you did it. So, do you think Mbappé has what it takes to become a goat or even the goat? Well, comment down below, I would like to know, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Bye.